I'm Rob from Hobzine.com. Thanks for joining me for another video beer review. This time something that I've actually been looking forward to for years. It is a bottle of Hair of the Dogs Adam, a 10% as it says on the bottle, hearty old world ale. This bottle of beer was brewed on the 21st of April of 2009. It's currently the 30th of um, November 2012. I remember years ago seeing a interview on um, YouTube with the uh, brewer and one of the founders, Alan Spritz, um, and he talked about that their beer um, is kind of brewed to be enjoyed in like two, three, four years' time. And I mean, it is a challenge to keep a bottle of beer that is going to be that long. I bought this online a number of years ago now, two, three years ago now, uh, from a shop in um, Amsterdam. I live in England, obviously, but in Amsterdam, I bought it online. I've sat on it for years and years. Just, I remember Alan saying this is the best way to enjoy his beers. That shop is no longer there in Amsterdam, but this beer is still here. And it's been on my shelf and in various cupboards and in two homes for a number of years now. I've had quite an important day regarding my kind of personal life. Um, so I thought, I'm going to mark this day with a really special beer. So the, I'll give you some details about this beer because it's, it's, it's quite a unique thing. I guess that's what Hair of, Dog, Hair of the Dog had known for quite a lot of barrel age and a lot of ageing of beers. And it says on, uh, on the website, Adam is a recre recreation of a historic beer style. Originally made in Dortmund, Germany, it was the first beer I produced and opened Hair of the Dog. When I opened Hair of the Dog, rich in flavour, Adam is best served as a dessert beer. It is best with chocolate or cigars. I ain't gonna chocolate, I ain't gonna cigars, and that's for sure. Uh, or, just a, or, or just a warm fire and good company. It has 10% alcohol by volume and 50 IBUs. Um, and it, as it says, you can foot track the kind of age of your... Um, Hair of the Dog beers on their website, and that's how I found out when this beer was actually brewed. Hair of the Dog have always been one of those breweries that I've uh, really looked for. Um, one of the biggest influences on me doing these silly little videos was Mark Starr from The Hoppery, and he was a, um, somebody who really um, can promote Hair of the Dog as being like a really exclusive, exciting brewery. And this is going to be like going to be something unlike anything I've had before. Is it going to fly everywhere? Is it going to be clap? Is it going to be completely lacking carbonation? No, it's got a nice fizz. Not it's not spilling over everywhere. Wow, I've got a whiff of that one. This is going to be really interesting, really different. I always feared when I bought this bottle of beer that somebody who'd, who'd sold it to Crack Kettle, which was the shop in Amsterdam, used to kind of trade in a lot of beers there to people, and um, wow, this is exciting. Um, I thought it might have been some own brewer being caps. It's got a real plain cap, I'm thinking. A brewer like Hair of Dog, it's got plain caps. Anyway, less of my waffle and less of the story behind it. The most important thing, the beer in the glass. I'm not going to say it's black. I think it's a really, really, really dark mahogany. There is a hint of kind of really dark crimson at the bottom, but it looks very dark, but like a... It's not black. I'd say it's a really dark red. The head, thin, decent for this kind of ABV and this kind of age of beer. Um, kind of like a, a mid-tan, quite a coffee looking head. Looks great. Now here's the big thing. Let's get our aroma. I've got my best glass out. My fancy Spiegelau glass. Wow. Hair of the dog after all these years. Let's check out the aroma. Wow. I don't think I've got the vocabulary or kind of reference points to kind of get this beer like through my head and interpret it for you people. It's got a quite a oaky um, red wine quality. Not not that boozy. There is definitely a, a ha alcoholic edge to it. There's a kind of like an aged port. Gr um, raisins definitely. There's a, a leathery note definitely. Like it's got a mild solvent note, which I'm sure is the alcohol, but a real leathery note, maybe like a, there's a vanilla note in there, maybe a hint of marzipan, a hint of kind of beef stock, just a rich, rounded, warming, it does, it's got the kind of characteristics of a 
comfy old leather couch. It smells unlike anything I've ever smelled. I mean, as, as I'm sure if you're watching these videos, I mean, it's easy to say, talk about IPA and Imperial Style and stuff like that. There's a lot of common characteristics, but this is really different. Wow, it smells incredible. Wish me luck. I'm going to taste this beer. This three and a half, over three and a half year old beer, which I've been sitting on for at least two and a half years. I had this beer when I started doing these videos, and I've been doing this for quite a while now. Wow. I'm going to have to dive in. Cheers. Oh, they weren't messing. Talking about that idea of a, a roast, uh, uh, open fire and cigars and things like that. Chocolates. Mm. As soon as it hits your lips, you go, oh, something special going on here. That's what you, you just get that reaction straight away. And I'm really relieved that this is as good as it is. Whoa. Initially a really nice, smooth, really rich caramel, heavy on the kind of brown sugar. Once again, port but not boo boozy. Loads of big oaky quality in there. Once again, that leathery note. I'm getting like that, I'm getting like a almond essence. Oh, smoky. There's a there's a really kind of like funky kind of malt loaf character to it. There is a bit of heat at the back end. Nice and warming though as it goes down. Loads of kind of rum soaked raisins and currants. Big dried kind of dried dates and figs. Yeah, you can, that idea of the, the kind of the cigar leaves, that kind of thing, is definitely perfect. It has that kind of like Branston pickle now, but it's a there's a softness to it. There's a elegance. There's a real kind of like it's it just makes you think of kind of old sofas and leather bound books, and it's got this kind of oh this this intangible quality, which I've never experienced ever. What would you class this as? It's a historical style. I've got no. I've even got many kind of like comparisons to this beer at all. I mean, you could say it's. It might taste a little bit like a Belgian cord, but it's got certain kind of notes of that, but with a lot more complexity. It's such a unusual beer, so r rare in the UK. Wow, as I said, I had to, I had to buy this from Holland online. This is a lasting, lingering. Warmth, oh no, a relative, maybe a slightly hoppy note at the back end, like an old Fuggles East Kent Goldings note, that spiciness, but it just hangs around like a warming, like yeah, it's just like in front of a, it's like a sizzling, a crackling log fire. But wow, what a beer, what a beer, and I'm really glad I opened this bottle today. Sometimes beers are for occasions and it can uh, a beer can be heightened by kind of mood and things like that. I remember right, reading on a beer advocate about you shouldn't do you shouldn't taste beer when you like this or well like that. You're in, in bad mood. You've eaten anything in particular which might have an uh, overriding flavour. But this just seemed perfect for today. It's bloody horrible outside. It's freezing cold. I'm indoors. I've got a beautiful warming beer to enjoy. And wow. Just such a wonderful experience. I'm going to enjoy every last drop of this. So that is a three and a half plus year old bottle of Adam from Hair of the Dog in Portland, Oregon. A hearty old world ale. It's definitely got that old ale quality to it. It's maybe got a hint of like an old, old beer or something like that as well. Beautiful, beautiful and, and such a fantastic experience. I'm going to enjoy, as I said, every mouthful of this beer. Wow. Didn't let me down one little bit. Anyway, I'm Rob from PopScene.com. See you next time. Cheers.